first guest is one of the most incredible survivor stories I've ever heard. Greg Anderson, a young husband, father, spending his life working in ministry when he received about the most devastating news that anyone can receive. The doctors told him he had an advanced form of lung cancer. He was given 30 days to live. Well, that diagnosis, I'm not going to tell you, was many years ago, but he's here today with us. Healed. Take a look at this. Before cancer, I was really a very driven person. I had my mind around trying to be a success in business uh, as well as in life. And those lifestyle issues, they created this sense of stress and emptiness and wanting. And I was one of these people who would not take care of myself properly. And I started to have these increasingly difficult coughing episodes. I, I started to cough up blood and it was soon discovered uh, lung cancer. The doctor came in and he said, Greg, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'd give you about 30 days to live. And I can remember more than anything else, kind of going numb, this sense, this cloud just descended on me. And really all I could do was, at that point I felt, was fall on my knees in prayer. And the prayer brought the presence and the power of God to life. This is about surrendering to the promises of God. Not medical treatment or diet. Sure, they had an element. It's, it's, it's the key to conquering cancer. And five years later, it now says this, cancer, this patient is clinically free of any signs of cancer. And I can remember weeping. Cancer can be a turning point, a, a, a spiritual turning point in life. And I started looking for other cancer survivors. Finally found one through a cancer center in Southern California, and that led to another. There was a group of us, uh, about 16 of us, that we had connected in this way, and we had a meeting. And it was at that meeting we formed Cancer Recovery Foundation, and we talked about it takes more than medicine to get well and stay well. And life today is a wonderful blessing. I'm the most blessed guy in the whole world. I'm alive, I have a wonderful wife, we have a great family. I'm telling you, life doesn't get much better than that. And if there's any one thing I would encourage people to do, it would be to stop every day, put yourself in the presence of God, and listen. In there is power for living on a whole new level. What an incredible story. But before I bring Greg Anderson out, I want to ask all of us on the helpline, remember what I told you when we went off the helpline last week? Make your home a place of prayer. And as we receive these prayer needs from all over the world, you're not just only calling for prayer, but you're in agreement with us that God will reach out, touch people at the point of their need. We've just received an incredible prayer request from a dear mother, twin sons, both homosexuals, and both are afflicted with AIDS and their eyesight is going away from them. I want you to know we've received that and we're praying that God and his presence will be very close to you right now. Well, please welcome with me to the helpline, Greg Anderson. Hello, Morris. God Hello. bless you. Good God to see bless you. you. God bless you. I am so excited to have you on the helpline. I don't know whether you were listening or not, but a few minutes ago, I just told the people that one of the greatest needs that people call for here on the helpline is for cancer. And I've come here today to say more than anything else, I want cancer patients globally to put in place a new primary treatment program. It's prayer. P-R-A-Y, pray. 
Now, I want you to tell me that before cancer, at what point did you realize that something was wrong with you physically? Well, you know, I, I did not take care of myself and was a driven person. And I started to cough. And that coughing soon became something that was chronic. I couldn't quit. And uh, after some poking and prodding, it was then discovered that I have lung cancer. And uh, I, had, I did have surgery, so don't, don't think that, that you don't use doctors. I read your story. In an they, intelligent they, way. They took one of your lungs out? That's right, I don't have a left lung. But the point simply is that surgery complemented this fundamental treatment approach of putting prayer first. You know, you've been so instrumental in, in, in teaching people that God is bigger than our problems. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and, <clears throat> and God, who created everything that is, is certainly much bigger than cancer. And so that's why I so passionately ask people to understand the base of treatment for cancer is prayer. Something happened. They took the lung out, and you thought maybe the cancer was cured? Well, I did, but I went back to my wayward ways, and four months later, it came back. And, uh, worse actually had, than ever. Worse than ever, throughout the lymph system, had just a massive tumor here in the base of the neck. And that's when I was told by the surgeon. The surgeon actually said some words that are frightening. He said, Greg, I don't know how to tell you this. But the tiger is out of the cage. Yes, I remember reading that. He said, your cancer has come roaring back, and I'd give you about 30 days to live. I would just say that, Morris, and, 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 and to our viewers, cancer brought me to my knees physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And on my knees is the way I should stay. And I would ask people in your own situation, take a lesson from that. It is so powerful. You know, truly, prayer, it, it changes everything, not the least of which is ourselves. Okay, here you are. They've taken the lung out. You thought you were cured. Four months later, you've got worse cancer than you ever had before. Now you've got 30 days to live. When did you know that you were healed? Look well, at you. You know, Incredible. People, people, people often say, well, when did you realize you would live longer than 30 days? And I said, well, on the 31st day. <laughs> <laughs> God, God's grace is sufficient unto the day. We all know that. But it wasn't until actually five years after that initial diagnosis that my medical records state that this cancer, uh, this patient is cancer free. You know, that is not so important as it is for us to fix our mind, fix our spirit on the great healing promises of the Bible, mm. on the words great power in our lives, and to thank God in advance for that healing. It is a state of mind and spirit that I can only say instills us with this presence of the Lord. And through that, miracles can happen. Well, you know, Greg, I, I sense that presence of God on your life. And I don't say that to be super spiritual because truly you live in this. Yeah. This is not just something that happened to you one time. But I know from the witness of the Holy Spirit here that you live in this type of experience walking in the presence of God and in the power of his word. We, we really do. We started, my wife and I sat around our little kitchen table shortly after the 30 day to live diagnosis, prognosis, and we said, Lord, use this. Use us. We surrender mm. and let us help the next person, the next family going through cancer. And we started just a little, a, a small group of people. And this year we have opened offices in our sixth country. Wow. And we'll serve over 5 million people with cancer. We're trying to do with cancer 
what you have done so well over these decades of work. We think a model of, uh, of work would be you. Thank you so very, very much. And you know, I, I want you that are watching right now on the helpline, please. Faith is a fact, but then faith is an incredible act. Don't just sit there listening to what God can do and wondering if he'll ever do it for you because you won't know until you take that step of faith. Do it right now. Pick up the telephone in your home. It's your helpline. And call us right now, toll free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it doesn't matter what your faith is, what your religion is, because helpline is for all people of all faiths. We'll help you. We'll help you get through to God. We'll help God to touch you at the point of your need. I received your little book, Cancer and the Lord's mm. Prayer. You can tell I devoured this little book. It is so simple. It is so wonderful. And you know what I want you to do, if you would? I want you to minister right now the Lord's Prayer. Take us step by step by step through the Lord's Prayer. Would you do that? You want the I would be honored to do that. Would you do Morris? that? Pray with me the Lord's Prayer in a very real way like you've never done before. Not some repetitive prayer, but pray with me from the heart. Our Father, it's all right there. It's all right there. God, our, our Father, our Heavenly Father is so much more powerful than any illness you're dealing with. And the prayer says, Our Father who art in heaven, that establishes the fact. Oh, that's so important. Our God made all that is and all that ever will be. And certainly he's much more powerful than, than the illness that you're experiencing. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, holy. Also, healing comes from that same root. God in heaven, the all-powerful God. Hallowed, holy, ready to heal. And then we go to thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. This is not about our will, but God has a higher will for you. It's your will, Lord. It's your will that we pray for and that we know is going to be much more than we could ever, ever imagine. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to be servants of yours here now and through that, all sorts of healings will take place. Now our request, give us this day our daily bread. This is, this is much more than bread to eat. These are our provisions for life. And God wants to bless you so abundantly, including the gift of healing. And then we go to forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let me speak gently here. In order for me to receive healing, I had to do the work of forgiveness. I had to release hostility. I had to get that out of my life and and, and say, Lord, I refuse to live this way. Might that be the case with you? It could be the key to the entire healing. Lead us, Lord, not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. You know, the temptation of many people facing illness is self-pity, self-doubt. Don't be tempted. Your God is much more powerful than that. Mm. And then finally, the praise. You know, Lord, yours is the kingdom and the, the power and the glory. That's praising God. Thank God for your healing now, yes. even before it happens. Mm -hmm. And then we close. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. It shall be so. Amen. Mm. Wow, didn't you get something from this today? Ladies and gentlemen, let's thank Greg Anderson for being our Helpline guest today.
Thank you.